Hi again, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It is weather for weather geeks on this Thursday evening. As we go into the weekend, the weather looks fantastic, both Saturday and Sunday. If you like a little fall preview in your August forecasts, well, Friday's your day. If you are longing for July-like weather, midsummer weather, well, then Sunday's your day. We're going to see some big uh, swings over the next few days. Today was another cooler than average day. No, not by a huge margin or anything, but uh, four days in a row this week have all been a few degrees cooler than the average, which is about 81 at this time of the year. 78 are high today. Now, when you factor in both highs and lows, we're still running a little bit warmer than average for the month so far. We haven't had very many uh, coolish nights just yet, although tomorrow night looks awfully cool. We'll end up in the 40s in some spots tomorrow night, unlike on this day back in 1938. Um, it was a, uh, a record temperature that we have not come close to breaking since, and it's a record warmest low temperature. 81 degrees was the low that morning of August 17th, 1938. Uh, the next closest to this number is 79. Uh, we've never had a low on in recorded history of 80. Uh, our next warmest uh, overnight low, 79 degrees, but uh, 81 sets the record, takes the cake, if you will, on today's date back in 1938. Before we talk about the short range, let's talk briefly about the longer range because today the Climate Prediction Center put out their initial September outlook across the lower 48 states, and we'll talk about temperatures and precipitation. Uh, their initial outlook shows a pretty neutral looking map across the Great Lakes and into the Northeast, with warmer than average temperatures favored across the Rockies and the Deep South. My personal opinion on this map is I think it might be a little bit conservative for our area. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if the warm anomalies came farther to the east. I do think that, uh, in my opinion, odds are favoring a warmer than average September, um, especially from uh, Youngstown on south and west through the lower Ohio River Valley. Uh, the rest of the fall season might be a different story. Based on the analogs, when we have a, a fairly stout El Nino coming on, in a lot of those years, September was not particularly cool. In fact, it was a little warmer than average some of the time. But October and November tend to be on the cool side compared to the average in emerging moderate to strong El Ninos. The CPC outlook in terms of precipitation, showing above average precipitation favored from roughly our area on south into the rest of the southeast, with below average precipitation favored across parts of the upper Midwest. I don't have too much of a problem at all with this map. I have a little bit of a quarrel with the initial temperature outlook, but of course we'll talk more about September towards the end of this month. As of the recording this video at about 7.09, showers are pushing in from the uh, west right on schedule or just a little bit ahead of schedule. Unfortunately, just in time for night one of the high school football season, we're going to get wet in many places. A little bit of a gusty wind can develop and you'll notice off to the west we do have occasional lightning strikes. There's not going to be an overwhelming amount of lightning it looks like this evening, but I can't rule out some lightning and thunder before the evening is through. The atmosphere is not particularly unstable. There's a lot of wind shear aloft, changing of the wind speed with height. There's a lot of that. But the instability is pretty middling here locally. It's a little higher right along the cold front out here across northwest Ohio. That's where the actual cold front is located this evening. But the uh, instability is middling, so, you know, thunder and lightning, there's a chance. Severe weather, there's an even smaller chance. I really don't think uh, we'll have a 58 mile per hour wind gust anywhere across the area this evening. Now, nationally, the big weather story in the coming days will actually be this, and we're looking at the Pacific Ocean here. This is Hurricane Hillary, which looks awfully healthy this evening on the satellite picture, Category 2 hurricane, um, on its way to probably becoming a, at least a 3, if not a 4, by the end of the week and into the weekend. Now, this is going to take a very intriguing and unusual track up through the Baja of California and into parts of the U.S., namely Southern California, it looks like is in the middle of the cone. Now, a little wobble here and there will make some difference when it comes to rainfall totals, but here's one model depiction of rainfall totals over the next several days. Several months worth of rain. Uh, many, many months worth of rain in places like Death Valley, uh, Palm Springs, uh, Indio, even Los Angeles. We'll see a lot of rain out of this. Now, the amounts are going to be different than is shown here. This is just one run of one model, but the potential is there for several inches of rain in many places in California, Nevada, and far western Arizona. So this is an unusual situation. We haven't had a tropical system ha make, you know, kind of a direct path through Southern California in a long, long time. Back here at home, what a great evening we have coming up Friday evening for high school football. We have four games this evening, many more games Friday evening. 
and the sky will be clear. And for many people, it'll be hoodie weather, especially by the second half. Uh, we're talking temperatures not far from 60. On our way down into the 50s at night and probably even upper 40s by the end of the night. But despite that cool start, a little September preview, Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon looks absolutely beautiful. This trough of low pressure is out of the way. Pardon me, high pressure builds in. Hardly a cloud in the sky all day Saturday. Same idea Sunday, but the difference Sunday is as we get on the other side of that high, it's more of a southwesterly wind, and that'll send temperatures way up into the 80s. It'll be a noticeably warmer afternoon coming up on Sunday. So our weekend forecast looks like this. 78 after that cool start Saturday morning. Pretty comfortable to start Sunday morning, but almost 10 degrees warmer Sunday afternoon as compared to Saturday afternoon, and that warming trend will continue into early next week. If we're going to hit 90, seems like Monday is the most likely day to, to do it. Some of the modeling has the heat surging back in towards the end of the week. Um, that is far from certain, though. There's some model disagreement there. Um, so we're going to kind of play it in the middle right now and talk about temperatures mostly in the uh, in the 80s next week. But just know that uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on the trends for the second half of the week because there's uh, a possibility that that some of the warmth surges back in. We may not be done with flirting with 90 by the end of next week, but that's a low confidence thing at this point. Higher confidence in the idea that it's largely a dry week. Once we lose the showers later on tonight, um, it seems likely we're going to stay dry through at least the middle of next week. That'll do it for me on Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening with high school football season starting this week. Uh, we won't do Weather Geeks most Friday evenings unless the weather is particularly active. So I'll see you back here next week on the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Have a great Friday and a great weekend.